Hello, this is uh, Fern, aka Casually White Shores, also known as Lunchbox, also known as her White Shores dad. I'm here at Anime Expo. It is hustling, it's bustling, it's really nice, and I am actually here today with someone special. What's up? <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> What is your name and what do you do? All right, so my name is uh, Matt. You guys might know me as I met the intern. Uh, I'm the marketing manager at uh, Bushino International. Yes. Yeah. Don't ask me how I got this interview. <laughs> Don't ask me how I got it. So uh, do you have a background in training card games or any other products like games, music, or anime that uh, Bushy Road provided either in your personal life or in your professional life? Yeah, so basically like the main reason why I joined in the first place was because I was playing like Vanguard. Mm -hmm. Right, so I, was, you know, I was playing Vice before that, yeah. and then I played Vanguard as well. So I played that for like three, four years, and then um, after that, kind of like we had like uh, they were hiring people to do like part-time work. Yeah. So I thought, hey, why not? Right, since it's something that I enjoyed. Then um, one thing led to another. I was finished. I was doing my studies at the time, and then when that was done, like I was offered a full-time position. And then, yeah. Yeah. So okay. playing card games can get you jobs. <laughs> it can get you a job. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so. I'm assuming this isn't your first marketing position. Oh, uh, it is. Actually. It is? It is, yeah. Oh, so okay. I was actually studying marketing before that. And then once, you know, like uh, the position opened up, it just made sense for me to just take yeah. it on. Yeah. All right, so yeah. this question might be a little irrelevant, but how is it different marketing for a Japanese company whose product is a variety of different intellectual properties as opposed to a company that sells like one product, like socks? Right. Since you're, since are you handling just one certain aspect of of uh, Bushy Road or the entirety of it? Okay, so um, marketing for a uh, game like this, like like Vice right? It's really uh, it's quite complicated because there's a lot of different layers and different steps. Mm -hmm. So actually, tomorrow <laughs> during the panel, I'll be talking a yes. little bit more about that. But like, yeah. um, so the main problem is, of course, oh, I wouldn't say problem, but like the main challenge is that generally every um, licensed IP holder, they have like different standards for like what they feel is, yeah. you know, okay, so my IP needs to have this, 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 before you can do a promotion, for example. Mm -hmm. So each one, they usually have like different requirements. So having to match all of that, um, you know, is, is the biggest challenge. Plus yeah. every month, we more or less every month we have a release. So you have to think about, you know, oh, so next month I have this, what do I need to do for this? And then like, yeah. you want to do extra things, can I get it through the licenses first? So mm -hmm. we always have to buffer a lot of time before that. Yeah. So like maybe we'll take, so if a, if a release is coming out this month, right? We probably started working in it last year, December. Okay. Something like yeah. that, maybe, or maybe even before that, depending on the IP. For yeah. English original titles, we have to be up to a year. Because okay. we have like a proposal stage, we'll go to them like, oh, we'll, if we like to put your IP in a card game, would you want to yeah. be interested? things like that so okay. that's like an insanely long process um, usually I handle just the marketing aspect yeah but I have been involved in like um, pitching as well so um, for Adventure Time we actually went down to the their offices and then we pitched the project to them yeah before we actually got like the whole thing so like we went to the offices you go everything. to Warner Brothers for that uh, yes yes yeah. pretty much yeah how and for never mind well, I, I was about I was about to ask for Ruby but um, so this is actually a kind of like a major one that I kind of wanted to answer. Uh, so there's a trend in American marketing where memes and unhinged posting is part of the marketing strategy. Kind of like, um, I don't know if you heard about Radio Shack recently and how they just went, they went insane on okay. Twitter basically. Okay. They, they And eventually um, they just deleted every single one of their Twitter posts. <laughs> they went really off the rails. Right. Um, have you proposed this style of marketing for Bushy Road? Uh, yeah, so actually for, Vanguard, I've been kind of doing that a little bit. Like, I, <laughs> okay. so, so I think like at the start, before Overdress hit, yeah. I tried a little bit of these things, and it, and it really worked. And I, and I do believe it's because like the gaming culture in general, not just like the American like uh, yeah. culture, they accept like these more readily because the brands are, appear more approachable. Mm -hmm. Like, I think I would, I mean, I'll just, for Japanese um, traditional sense, when they think about these things, they won't really, they, it, it'd be difficult for them to accept, which is, I mean, kind of understandable because yeah. for them, like, um, social media is a way for them to advertise. So they want it to be as uh, clean as possible. They want you to have as much information as possible. Mm -hmm. They want it to be as um, professional as possible. Yeah. So, like, the company needs to present this information to you and they're not going to do, like, to some, anything too crazy. But for us, like, thinking from, like, the global's perspective, mm -hmm. It makes sense because like the gaming culture in general is just, you know, everybody just wants to have fun, yeah, or chill, silly. making memes, yeah. having fun. Yeah. But you know, at the end of the day, um, doing this helps us create like that camaraderie, that bond with our mm -hmm. players. Yeah. And I think that has helped like uh, improve like the game's image just a little bit. Yeah. Even, even if it's just a little bit, I think that helps because, yeah. you know, 
uh, apart from like the memes and stuff, uh, and uh, of course like the crazy, the crazy posts and yeah. all that, like you, you get the opportunity to ask people like you know, have proper conversations and I realize you know, taking in that feedback is very very important for us yeah. also. So that you can't really get everything through just a survey because you know we we generally do surveys every yes, half yeah. a year or so, but like these interactions they give you like more insight into how people think like yeah. the, how the consumers think as well and how they uh, perceive the brand mm -hmm. so like doing this helps us to you know do just a little bit like a bit more PR yeah. work than yeah. what would normally you know you would do if you, you would stick to that I can tell you that um, <laughs> originally when I first proposed the ideas and when I started posting it, it was it, my bosses were like are you sure this is gonna work? <laughs> are, you, are, you, yeah. are you serious? Are yeah. you gonna, are you, did, you, did you really post this? But like, I told him, it's okay, just, just give me a little trust. bit of trust, trust. And, then, and then we'll see how it goes. And yeah. then, it's, so far for Vanguard, it's turned out quite well. So, so um, Sean, my colleague, he's actually starting to try to do that with Spice as well. Yeah. And hopefully it takes off uh, just as well for, for that. So you will never go full unhinged? Uh, probably not full. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> probably not full crazy, but like, you know, we'll, we'll turn up the crazy just a little bit. Just a little bit, okay. Yeah, just a little bit, yeah. Uh, since you brought up the, the surveys, sorry, this is not, yeah, I didn't no say worries, this. Yeah. Um, how much did the product surveys actually influence the decision of either bringing a series to Y Shores or kind of like bringing the product over? Um, like the supply sets, card supplies right, and stuff like that. Right, um, I guess a lot of times we, okay, so survey information is hot and cold and sometimes um, what's hot at this point may not be hot like a couple of months later, yeah. right? So the problem is whenever we get the information, we sometimes need to take some time to act on it. Yeah. So sometimes we may not be able to hit the nail right on the mark. So there have been a couple of times where some things were like very highly rated, like people, everybody was asking for the set. Yeah. But in the end, like the sales didn't really show it, I guess in the end. Yeah. So it's it's never like a 100% accurate uh, mm -hmm. measure, but it is a good indication of like where everybody's minds are at right now. Yeah. But like, you know, we have to do our own like market research. So like, for example, if let's say there's a series coming out in Jap the Japanese edition that's like, people say it's going to be really popular. But we think, okay, so we need to think about Okay, if we get this now, how long later will we be able to release it? So like, if we get yeah. this now, it's gonna come out six months later. It's, are people still gonna be interested? Yeah. Uh, you know, are people okay. still gonna buy this? Gotcha. Things like yeah. that, right? So like, for but for IPs like Data Live, these are things that you know. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is gonna sell yeah. because like the popularity of the characters, the series itself is really good. Plus like there was a movie coming up at that point. Yeah. I think. Yeah. So there is, we, yeah. We, yeah. So like. We have to consider all these other factors as we are deciding on a title. So it's not so simply okay, like, yeah. oh, okay, this is popular, we should pick this up. Yeah. So I guess the exception is probably Hololife. Hololife is like going insanely well. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's doing insanely well. Like globally, it's a, it's a global cultural phenomenon. So I think that's kind of a no-brainer. But for everything else, we do have to do our market research. Yeah. We do have to do like, you know, all, all these other things to make sure that we're, we're not like giving you guys something that, you know, everybody's just like, huh? I, yeah. I, I'm not gonna buy this because I, I don't know the title or something. Gotcha, like that. gotcha, right. gotcha. How did you get the idea for having an English strategy presentation? The videos. Oh. Um. <laughs> Was it influenced by the Japanese strategy presentations? Uh, pretty much. So, um, Kirani Kaicho, he just yeah. said, "You guys should do this as well." So. Uh, I feel a bit bad. Wait, wait, wait. So, Kidani told you that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He this is the directive directly from the top. Oh my God. He's like, do this. So. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I think the challenge for us is um, sometimes we don't really have like juicy information a lot of the time. But for yeah. my shorts, it's, it's all right because you guys get to see like, oh, you guys know what's coming up. Then you can kind of like plan out, you know, oh, yeah. I know this is coming out. I know this is coming out. And for Vanguard, it's a bit tough because for on that side, um, Generally, most of the information is known. But for white shorts, yeah. I think it's, it can be quite in, uh, exciting yes. for everybody. Yeah. Because um, you get to know uh, what series is going to be localized. And then, like, most of the time, we get to announce an English original. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, we get to announce one soon also, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Maybe. Maybe okay. there's an English. In, I, I, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. There might be one coming. <laughs> maybe. Most likely. Also, I want to uh, apologize to everybody oh. <laughs> that I said Hall Live was not coming over to English. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. Um, so, with, with this that's happening, with us get me getting the interview, yeah. uh, is there going to be a push to have more video style content with more content creators? Uh, I think okay. So this has been something that we're trying to push for over the last like six months or about a year or so. Mm -hmm. I think engaging with the community, like especially content creators, is a very yeah. very important uh, way to. Uh, not just engage with you, you guys and give you guys opportunities to do things like you know card reviews and stuff like that. Yeah. But also to make sure that we have like a, a good bridge for yes. so that we you no know, we can talk to you. Yeah. You can give us information, you can give us feedback and yeah. we can share that as well. So we've been doing that for Vanguard for quite a while. 
and I want to try and do that more for Vice definitely because yeah. I do I do see like the value in this and I've convinced my bosses of like the value of these things, right? So like the casual posts, the the memes and things like that. All these yeah. things are they're, they're more open to these ideas mm-hmm. right now that we we believe are like the ways into like the Western community. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely there there'll be more opportunities in the future. Yeah. All right. Cool. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, so there is a growing White Shores community on TikTok. Right. Have you thought about branching out from Twitter and Facebook to other me- social medias? Oh uh, yeah, for sure. But uh, I guess like the challenge is that I, I don't think there there were a lot of like card game. TikTokers in the first place, but yeah. recently there was a boom, right? So yeah. recently there was a growth, and I mean, if there's a demand, then definitely we will do some content. But of course, we do have to plan out the, the content and stuff like that. So internally, yeah. we don't really have like a dedicated social um, media team. Uh, I think social media team is we have a social media people, but it's just that we don't really have like people with expertise in TikTok. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that's the challenge. I think my yeah. my guys are not <laughs> TikTokers, so <laughs> it's but tough. It's tough. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's it's like because it's like a different demographic, right? People yeah. on TikTok they want different things from YouTube. So like when we do marketing, when we we think about uh, content in terms of like long form, short form, uh, things like that. So generally speaking, most people want like five seconds, ten seconds. Otherwise, if the review is too long, people tend not to watch the yeah. whole thing, right? Yeah. Like, from like a like if you do like a one minute thing versus like a 10 minute thing, more people are gonna stick to the end for like the one minute thing. Yeah. So TikTok is kind of like revolutionized this idea and it's kind of taken it to like a different level, different state where people, you know, everywhere you go, you see people like just scrolling, scrolling and things like that. It is, yeah. it is very easy to penetrate. So you just have to make sure that you're, you're angled the right way. Mm-hmm. So I do think that TikTok could be an avenue for us to explore, but uh, the challenge is, it comes back to whether or not we can do these kind of um, things with the IPs because yeah, yeah we have oh, to clear yeah. that with the licenses sometimes. Yeah. So it depends on the licenses. Some of them might want us to do it, some of them might not want us to do it, so it depends. Yeah. But we will try of course yeah. like moving forward. Yeah. I've always told people that with Y Shores, like there's such like a huge hurdle. Mm. Like cause with Vanguard you can just all right, what sets coming out? Alright, bring it over. With Y Shores you have to like work to get the licensing. That's right. That's yeah. Right. Okay. yeah. So but sometimes we do try to get it simultaneously. So uh, recently we didn't manage to do it but like for Tokyo Revengers we originally did plan to get um, a simul release but the, the problem was that there were a lot of hoops to jump through to make sure that this goes through and then yeah. our timeline is different from Japan's timeline like our yeah. Japan officer's timeline mm-hmm. so what works for them may not work for us so we're okay. trying to iron out all these differences before we try that again yeah. but of course we definitely we would like to see like you know everybody have fun where you, everybody can like brainstorm new decks together because right now English edition most of the time the sets are localized, right? So most yeah. of the time people already know what's coming out. Yeah. But like for English original, I think you see people like innovating. Oh, well, how should I build this? To, yeah. You know? And it's like first time information. So that's, that's cool, right? Like yeah. seeing everybody come out with new ideas. So it'll be the same thing if we can get a simul release. Yeah, and for sure. And that's something that I really want to see as well moving forward. Um, now we're getting to more of the less serious questions. Sure, yeah. Are there any, more, are there any plans to add Shioko on more advertisements? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think Shioko has kind of been like a like a secret mascot. Like some people, some people don't even know who Shioko she is. is yeah. I think yeah. So I think it's high time, high time to, <laughs> to use her a little bit more. Right, she's right here. Our, here qu- our queen, our, our <laughs> literal queen. I love Shioko. Yeah. Um, do you know who Intern Kun is? That's me, right? <laughs> no, on on Twitter, there's a there's, there's a joke. That's a joke that goes around about okay. Intern Kun. Okay. You could say no. It's all right. No. No. Okay. <laughs> all right. So Intern Kun's still out there. Right. Um, so to round it up, um, yeah. we got two more questions. Yep. No Who is your waifu, and do you have an SP of them? Ooh, this is a tough one, right? <laughs> uh, okay. So generally, I'm not really like a hardcore like collector, collector. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But um, if I had like okay, if I had to pick one. Um, Maybe Senjo Gahara. Senjo Gahara? That was like, okay, that was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like one of the first decks I built. Yeah. And one of the first decks that I, I actively like spend quite a bit to finish. I, I don't have the sign though, right? This right yeah. now is really, really expensive. But, yes, yes it is. But yeah, so I, that's one of my favorite all time, for sure. So y'all, y'all have company decks, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's your company deck? Uh, <laughs> I've hopped between a couple. Um, so I think a few years back, if you guys saw the Roselia one, I built the Roselia, like the yeah. Max Rarity the one Roselia. From, the like. one from 2018? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one that I and I used? Yeah, 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 yeah. So the Max Rarity, that was the one that I, yeah. I built that. I was using that for a while. Do you still have it? Uh, no, right now it's in like the uh, archive locked away. Damn. It's in a vault. I was just going to ask, can I touch it? Can she touch <laughs> that card? I want to touch that card as well. Yeah, no, it's, it's locked right. up right now. We, we make sure nobody touches it because <laughs> that thing is... 
It is getting way more yeah. expensive as, as the days go by. But yeah. Like, yeah. All right. This is this is a personal question. Yeah. Have you met Risa Samugi? <laughs> no, no, I haven't actually. But no? we, I was I was in when she was doing like the recording. Yeah. So that was quite fun. Ah. Yeah. The recording. Damn it. Fun, okay. Yeah. I, I, I really, one of my dreams is to be on the same Zoom call as Risa Sumugi. Yeah. Not meet her in person, <laughs> just be on the same Zoom call. Right. Which yeah. I did when I bought the D4 DJ oh, stuff. Cool. Yeah. So I was there, but I kind of like, we want to meet her more. But <laughs> be yeah, nice. It's, it's, it's a dream I didn't know I had, but somehow it was fulfilled. So it's, it's kind of <laughs> yes. cool, yeah. yeah. Even though I was just at the, end, at the back, like just listening to them talk. Yeah. Yeah, ah, so nice. That was really cool, yeah. All right, the last question. Yeah. What is one thing you would like to tell all White Shores players and collectors? I think everybody's love for card games is really evident when you see them. Like, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Like, you're, you're playing, you're collecting, you're playing casually, you're playing competitively, you're collecting, you're you know, trying to slap cards. Any, I, don't, I don't think there's like a, there should be a line between any of these people. And I think everybody loves the game for what it is, depending on their interpretation. And I think that's good enough, right? Like yeah. every, everybody can enjoy games in different ways, in their own way. And seeing Wise grow from just like a small, I guess in the international community it's a little bit small, but now it's growing to like having like different facets of, of um, the community, come in, different communities coming in. And I think that's amazing because that's, yeah. that's what helps games to thrive. Like if you only have like competitive gamers, generally speaking like the games won't be as popular as, because people, some people might think, oh, if it's just a competitive game, then everybody's going to be really sweaty and I don't want to jump in on a community like that. Yeah. But because there's so many different um, types of players and it's growing every day, like that's, that's the beauty of it, right? That's, that's how you get more people together, more people interested in the game, more people are like, you know, interested in the titles and, and stuff like that. And yeah. right now with anime being so popular, like right now in AX, it's, it's insanely packed today. Yeah, it's a lot of people. Yeah, so it, it, that kind of shows you like what kind of impact anime and like card games in general has already. So I think we should try to be less uh, aggressive and judgmental about others and then uh, try to accept that everybody, there are different people who enjoy their hobbies in different ways. And that's an amazing thing in and of yeah. itself. Yeah. All right. And that's where we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much. Oh, thank, you. thank you so right. much. Thank you so much. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, this is Casually White Shores signing off. Peace. <laughs>